Good morning, Badger Nation. I'm Mr. Race. I'm Mr. Weinheimer. I'm Mr. O. Curtis. And, and this is, is Character Wednesday. Wednesday. All right. So we've got a lot of awesome things going on here at the school. And we want to talk about a lot of the positives that are going on first and foremost here. Um, I saw a student uh, just last week sitting alone and I had some other people come up and sit with them to have a great time at lunch. That's awesome. I saw somebody that got hurt the other day and several students without anybody telling them came up and checked on that student, made sure they're okay and wanted them to get better. I've seen some uh, incidences out in the hall where a kid looked lost and a couple others came by and started looking and asked them, who's your teacher, where are you at? and showed them the way. So we are just really proud of all of the positive things that you guys are doing, um, and let's keep up with that. Now, for our topic today, we're gonna to be talking a little bit about bullying. So how do we know if it's bullying? This is a word that's thrown around and a lot of people talk about, but what is it actually? And so today we're gonna to talk about what it is in our eyes, in the state's eyes, and the law's eyes, and so that when you come to us and you talk about bullying, you have a better idea. Hey, we don't want bullying at our school at all obviously and you guys and us together are going to join up to make sure that we get rid of bullying at our school all right first question if we're trying to figure out whether something was bullying or not was the act a significant act so for example was something shared with the entire school that was negative about somebody i think in our eyes that would probably be a significant act and then we would go on to the next question there's another question right there tied to it and the next one says uh, was it by one or more students directed at another? Was the student that exploited had an imbalance of power? Meaning there are two or three people bullying on one person. Another one would be, is it a pattern of X? Okay, so as we go down our checklist, we start with those. Was it significant? Was it a pattern of X? Did it exploit that imbalance of power? Hey, you see those old school videos when I was a kid, somebody would try to push somebody around to try to get their, oh yeah, what, hey, so, uh, somebody would try to get their lunch money or something. I don't have lunch money, so they're not gonna try to steal that today. <laughs> hey, but you would see those kinds of things. So it's some kind of imbalance of power is what we're talking about. So then we go through the next question. Okay, there's different ways of bullying. It could be through physical contact, through verbal expression, saying things to somebody, through written expression, where you actually write something down, and also by electronic means. Also, it could be physically harms a student or damages their property. It could create a responsible fear of harm to a student or damages their property. And is it sufficiently severe, persistent, uh, or persuasive enough that the action or threat creates an intimidating educational environment, threatening educational environment, or abusive educational environment? Uh, materially or substantially disrupts the educational process or operation of the school, or does it infringe on the rights of a victim at school? Um, next it would be, what is the act committed by using any type of electronic communication? Okay, that's cellular or other phone, computer, camera, email, text, instant messaging, social media, internet website, internet communication. Did that act occur outside of school sponsored or school related activity? This is important distinction as David's law expands on the school district's authority to include cyberbullying incidents that occur off campus and outside of school sponsored or school related activities as long as it meets one of the below criteria. So now if you feel like you're away from school, not at a game, on a function and you want to snap about some child, some other student that you have a disagreement with, um, you could still be sought after for bullying. Can you tell us a little more about David's Law? So David's Law started a little, not too long ago, where a, a child, a student named David, was basically bullied on social media, basically bullied to the point to where he was told to commit suicide. Once you do this, once you do this, he just got kept being bullied. And he ended up um, taking his own life. And so this um, created a new law called David's Law, which before it was just on campus thing. So now it takes it off campus, okay? so. If you're bullying, that balance of empower, and you're trying to get a student to hurt himself, harm himself, even commit suicide, you're going to be, you're going to get caught up on a law with us because it's David's law. It's, it's a misdemeanor offense. You can be put in jail for it, even though you're not on school campus. And of course, you already know if it's on school campus, obviously 
it's the same rules. You could still go to jail for it. And in both cases, administratively, you could be dealt with as well. Is that right? That is correct. So you see, if you're treating people poorly, if you're being mean, and there could be consequences for you, either with the school or with the law. And that's why Officer Curtis is here today, because he cares a lot about you and wants you to do right and wants our students to be safe. Last question on here. Did the act interfere with the students' educational opportunities or substantially disrupt the orderly operation of a classroom? So if we go through these lists and they continue to be yes, some are on here throughout the list, hey, then it is bullying. Hey, a lot of times what we see is somebody comes forward when somebody was mean to somebody in class. Hey, well, if we talk to them, if it happens again, it's what we talked about up here, a pattern of acts, and then it becomes bullying. Hey, so you gotta make sure that even two, three, four times you're being mean to somebody and you understand that that's bullying and there will be a consequence for that. Okay, so how do we stay away from that? We encourage each other, we're kind to each other. What else can we do to stay away from bullying, Mr. Race? If you have a problem, okay, come talk to us, okay? Let us deal with the situation and you don't make it worse moving forward. Right, and if you, I mean, a lot of times nobody comes to us, that student will bully you, pick on you, pick on you, until you snap, okay? Now you've snapped, now you've made, maybe you've done something wrong. All right, so now you are facing these guys here and facing some kind of disciplinary action when, in fact, from the first time it happened, if you'll talk to any of us, we'll help stop it. But again, at the end of the day, okay, use the golden rule. Treat everyone like you want to be treated, okay? Be positive like Mr. Weinheimer here. Woo! And let's make it a, a great, great day, day to, to be a badger! badger.